Praise the Lord, everybody. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Oh man, I am ecstatic another day because again, I get to see and, and I'm breathing the air that um, never knew that I would end up breathing today because God did not promise us this day. Um, so I just thank God that he had allowed me and my family and friends to be able to be here another day to be able to spread the good news about the goodness of the Lord. Um, thank you again. I'm bringing glad tidings again from House of Prayer Evangelistic Church, um, where our pastor is Bernard Crawford Jr. And our first lady is evangelist, uh, or so I say prophetess, Trina Crawford. And um, I thank God for all our leaders, all those that are part of the church, the lay members, and even the other churches that are still standing proxy in the name of the Lord. Uh, we are in a in a crazy time, y'all. We're in, in this pandemic and beyond the pandemic, even before that, let's just be honest, a lot of people had started falling away. And, and the Bible talked about there'll be a great falling away. But we know also that we are here and those that believe and trust in God will stay the course. And so today I just wanted to, I wanted to brag on my Lord. I wanted to brag on God because so many times we're, we're complaining and so many times we're talking about other things and we brag on our cars. I mean, um, I've gone through some pages and people will brag on our kids. We'll brag on our jobs. We'll brag on our homes. We'll brag on all these other things. But, and, I, and I've seen some comments and I've seen some people say, hey, can we brag on, our, on my God? Can we brag on our Lord? And I, I love it when I see people do that. Well, today, that's what I want to do. I just want to kind of brag on. I don't want to be before you long, but I want to brag on my Lord, you know, because he is good and he is great and he is merciful and he's gracious and he's patient and he's loving and he's kind. You know, he's all of these things. And so I wanted to go ahead and uh, the Lord put it on my heart, but I just wanted to talk about how good he is and who he is to not just the believers. I wanted to say that not just for the believers, but for to everyone. And, and but those who trust in him and believe in him, there is a blessing in that. So if you would, let's go to prayer. Let's go and go ahead and, and go to the to the uh, throne of grace. And then we'll go ahead and get to this lesson. Uh, Heavenly Father, again, we thank you. We thank you for this day. We thank you for this super Sunday that you have given us. We know that there's so many activities going on today, even at our church, even though we're not in the church like we have been. But today is our communion time. This is our time where we commune with you, Lord. So we thank you and we thank you for all the different the, the uh, 6 a.m. prayer and then our unto God meetings and all of the activities and festivities that you have have put before us, Lord. We thank you. We thank you for opening our eyes and opening our hearts and opening our, our minds minds and opening uh, our, our, our thought process, Lord, that we may hear from you. Lord, today I thank you again for us celebrating another year of youth church. Even though we're not in the physical church, we're still together nine years of our youth, youth church. Lord, we thank you. Many have broken up. Many things have happened in this time. But Lord, you have continued to press it upon us that we may continue this course and run this race. And Lord, so we just thank you. We thank you for your promises. We thank you for your word. We thank you for our family and friends. And Lord, we thank you for this time that you have given us that we may share your good news abroad. Thank you, Lord. We thank you for it all. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And so again, we just thank the Lord. Uh, for this time. Again, um, I, I thank God for it. those who I didn't speak on and those that are around, Lord, we thank you for all of these people that have been part of our movement and part of what you have put before us. Today, uh, I wanted to talk about what I really was on my heart is our strong tower. Um, so many times we've heard songs <clears throat> and we, we hear these songs, the song that's called the name of the Lord is a strong tower. Um, the righteous run it too, and they're safe. And we hear the scripture, we hear the song, but <clears throat> sometimes I don't, I don't know if we ever really go in debt. <clears throat> Excuse me for my scratchiness and my scratchy voice, but um, I don't know if we really go in debt in knowing what this particular scripture means when it says the name of the Lord is a strong tower and the righteous run it, un run it unto and they're safe. And in Proverbs 18 and 10, 
It lets us know. And I'm so how it parallels even this is the Old Testament, but I'll show you how it parallels even unto the new and, and to where we are now. But right now, let's look at Proverbs 18 and 10. But before that, let's look at what this really means. When we look at the name of the Lord, it mean, it reveals the many titles by which his, his name has been made and known unto us, which describes also his attributes. So this lets us know not just the name, but all of his characteristics that comes with, with the name of the Lord. He's merciful. He's gracious, long-suffering, abundant in goodness, and he's truthful. And so I love this because all of these attributes are things that we need to have as believers. But what he's doing is, is showing us that he is the strong tower. He's showing us that, that he is our salvation. He is our refuge. He is all that we need and who we need to run to. I remember being young when um, even I remember living where we live. We lived in the project. We stayed in Parker Square. And so and I loved living down there. It was so many things that I, that I was that I, I grew in and learned living there. But one of the things that would happen is uh, we you would see a lot of family fights. Or you would see a lot of little things that would go on. And that was just part of us growing up down in that place. I know other folks, other hoods and other places had that. But. Down there, it was family oriented, but also you still had your little fights and your little thing, your little spats. Well, I remember times where things would go on and if too many people would come at me or if someone would try to jump me, then I would make sure I get to my home or get to that place where I found safety. So and, and y'all might somebody might agree with me and some of y'all y'all that's listening understand where I'm going. A lot of times when people surround you and they're trying to do something to you, it's a little rough. Even if you're good with your hands or you're good with whatever and you're young, you're just like, man. But you knew that when you got to that house or when you got to that person, and I would say even that, that uncle or your, your big brother or whoever. But when you got to that house, it was something about that house that made you feel safe. It was like when you went home, you felt so good that if somebody came over to your house, I don't care if it was two people, you were going to lay them out. You know, you was like, mm -mm, yeah, you come to my house, I got something for you. You come, I get my big brother, <laughs> it's on. And so this is, the, the point I'm getting at with this is, is this is what, God, the Lord trumps all of that. The strong tower trumps all of that. The name of the Lord trumps all of that because in those times, that was that was worldly. That was the, the some of the things that we did unrighteously that came back against us. So we might have got hit and jumped on. But the name of the Lord is a strong tower, which means this place is he's is our safety, our refuge. He is our salvation. He is the one that will truly protect you. He goes beyond big brother. He goes beyond that house. The house will burn. Brother will die and sister will go and uncle and them will go away. But he will never leave. That's why I wanted to brag on him because we have a strong tower. Even when we feel unsafe, when we're sick, when we feel like we're in a place where we have no trust in nobody, he is the one we can run to. He is the place where safety is met. He is the safe haven that we've never had. And so it's so important that we understand what a strong tower, what the name of the Lord is. When it says he is our strong tower, we have to understand what that really means. So, so let's go and look at Exodus. As we go into Exodus and we look at what happened with Moses in 34, the, the chapter 34 in the fifth and sixth verse, it says, Then the Lord came down in the cloud and stood there with him and proclaimed his name the Lord. And he passed in front of Moses proclaiming the Lord, the Lord, the passionate, the gracious God, slow to anger, abundant in love and faithfulness. The reason why I read this and, and, I, and I looked at this, I thought about it because when we look at Moses, we know that Moses had went through a, a time of first doubt with himself from the beginning about him not being able to lead. And then God said, well, I got somebody for that for you. I got a, your own brother. I'm going to use him to speak for you. So he did that for him. So he's already showing you who he is and how great he is. 
Then the next thing that he does is he puts him in a place to lead people out of this horrible place, out of Egypt. And he brings the Israelites and he's taking them to a place. And as he's taking them, that's when the Lord showed up. Now he's speaking to Moses. And just like today, God is still speaking, but he's speaking on another level. And, I, and we'll talk about that. But at this time, he came in a cloud to show his greatness and to show who he was. He was showing that, hey, I am your safety. I'm your refuge. I'm your salvation. Whatever you need, I'm here. If you need rain, I'll bring rain. If you need a cloud, I got a cloud. If you need sun, I'll bring the sun. And, when, and so what he did was he, made, he came in this cloud and he had already spoke to Moses before. But now he's showing him another time to, to say, hey, this is who I am. And as he did this, guess what? Moses called on and said, wow, okay, that is the Lord who is compassionate and grace and gracious and slow to anger, abundant in love and faithfulness. I love this because he has showed himself and he's constantly showing himself now. Even when we're not right, even when we're in the wrong place and we're thinking wrong thoughts, God is still doing great and marvelous things in our lives. The Lord manifested his glory in a cloud and then proclaimed his name. And that is perfection. His character demonstrated by the name of Jehovah. And we know Jehovah means God and not just any God. We're not talking about this God of uh, of these other uh, other religions. We're talking about the God. We're talking about the, 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 the father of Jesus. That's what we're talking about. We're talking about the entity of the Holy Spirit all in one is what we're talking about today. And so the Lord God is merciful, ready to forgive sinners and to relieve the needy. I don't know about you, but I needed this because I was a sinner, you know, and I, and I still or and I'm still tempted daily. But I was a sinner practicing in sin. And when I was in this place of practicing sin, I needed someone who could redeem me from this. I needed to know that I could be uh, uh, regenerated from this place that I was in. And guess what? God was merciful. When other folks was looking down and, and laughing at me and thinking this guy has lost his mind or this guy is going to hell. God said, I have a place and I am the place that you can run to. He is, as I continue to look at what he is, he's ready to forgive it again. And he's ready to forgive us of our anger and given time for repentance. He is taking all of these things and he's helping us. He's gracious and he's, he's kind and ready to bestow undeserved benefits upon our lives. He's long suffering, which means he's able to take time. He's even, when we look at patience, he goes greater than that. We're able to go to him and he's able to provide this thing for us that man can't do. Even when we try to be long suffering, even when we try to be patient with others, the Lord trumps all of that. He has something. It's something about the Lord that we are striving for, but we are, we'll never get. And that's why we need to know about this strong tower. He is abundant in goodness and truth. And even sinners receive the riches of his bounding abundantly, abundantly, though he even though we abuse them. In other words, even the, the sinner, God has always looked after them, even in spite of where they were, because God knows the heart of man. And even though we abuse the things that God has given us and, 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 and all the, those things, guess what? God is still merciful and still loving. Look, all he reveals is infallible truth. All he promises is faithfulness. Think about that. Keeping mercy for thousands, and he continuously shows mercy to sinners and has treasures which cannot be exhausted to the end of time. Forgiving iniquity and transgressions and sin, and he's merciful, and his goodness reached to the full and free forgiving and forgiveness of sin. And he, and his will, in his will, he clears guilt. 
That is awesome, y'all. Come on. How many of y'all have been guilty? You know you've been guilty. And for some reason, you didn't get the penalty that you deserve. I'm going to raise my hand because I know some of y'all, some folks, ain't gonna, they're not going to be honest. But this is what God does. Even the things that we should have got, the penalties and the, 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 the suffering that we should have got, God did not allow us to get those things. Some of us, and I'll say myself, deserve death because of the way that we have treated God. But he has been, again, our refuge. He has been our salvation and he has been honest and he has kept his word. Look, let's look at this. In Christ's suffering, the divine holiness and justice are fully shown and the evil of sin is made known. God's forgiving mercy is always attended by his converting and sanctifying grace. None are, are pardoned, but those who repent and forsake. And I want y'all to hear this. And forsake and allow the practice of, of, of every sin, nor shall any escape who abuse or neglect or despise the great salvation. If we look at this and we look at the scripture that we just talked about, Moses bowed down and worshiped reverently which means daily. He reverent God. In other words, he understood who he was and he bowed down before God daily. Why? Because he knew that he is the rock of a salvation. He is everything that we need. He is the place that we need to run to, to be safe. And I love this. And every perfection in the name of God, the believer may plead with him for the forgiveness of his sins, the making of holy, the holiness of the heart, and the enlargement of the Redeemer's kingdom. So if we look at this, we know, and if we don't know, we should look at this today. And I'm talking to my youth right now. I'm praying that our parents and, and others out here or, or have, our, have our youth um, zoomed in and, and in this Facebook Live. I want y'all to understand, young people, that in spite of where you are right now, I don't care what you did last night. I don't care if you rebelled. I don't care if you, you ran from your parents. I don't care if you lied, you cheated, you, you did whatever that you did. The Lord still loves you. And he knows that there is better, there is, there is greatness in you. And so I'm praying that you, you're listening to this, that we need to know that God is merciful. You need to know that he is gracious and he's long suffering. In other words, in all of these places and no matter what you have done, because I've been there and done that. And many of us have been there and done that. God is still yet here for you. So I'm letting you know that whatever that you have done right now is a time of what we call repentance. This is a time for you to not just ask for forgiveness, but for you to turn away from that thing that you had once done, not to go back to that thing. This is what God is trying to get us to because it says the righteous run it to. I want you to understand that. And so we're going to get to that, too, and talk about the righteous, because and when we look at this righteous, this is not talking about perfection. This is not talking about a perfect person, because even when it talks about perfection in the Bible and it talks about us being perfect or being righteous, what it's saying is us being mature in Christ. That's what it's saying, because until we make it into heaven, will we ever be perfected? But we can strive for perfection, but we can mat be mature in the spirit. Understand that, young people. So don't go around thinking, well, man, I, I got to be perfect, so I'm just going to hold off. Or I'm going to do No, what God is telling us, but we do need to mature. In other words, we can't, we can't stay on milk. We can't stay on those old things and continuously act like a baby. We have to grow where we are. And when we do this, regardless of where we are, God is still the strong tower. I'm just telling you, he's still the refuge. He's still our salvation. But what he wants us to do is to stand for righteousness and stand in righteousness so that we can move forward and go to the place where God has called us. And that's why it tells us. So as we looked at, at in the beginning of this, it says the name of the Lord is. And we talked about the name of the Lord and all the things that, that he is. We know that he is a strong tower. We know that he is all these things. And if we, if we really look at it, and we look at, that was the Old Testament. When we look at the New Testament, it shows us that Jesus, if we parallel this, it shows us that Jesus was, was sent and in place. And he is put in the place just as, as God went into the cloud. What he did was he sent his son 
on a natural side. In other words, he put him in man so that also we would still have an example now. When we look at the New Testament, when we look at where we are right now, he sent, he, he went on because of what happened then. He said, you know what, what I'm going to do now is so that I can verify and so that I can show you that the covenant, the new covenant that I made with you, I'm going to send my son. And it tells us that in the scripture, it shows us that he had came and he lived and he died for us so that we may live this life. And so he still let us know that he is still the strong tower. He had he, he brought us someone else, which is still in the vein, which is the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, which he still is still in the same place. But he's letting us know that I'm going I'm to draw you even closer. I'm going to give you something even closer to you that's going to help you and, and show you how to live. And so I love this. And it says, the, and so the righteous run it to, and they're safe. So as we look at the running to, the name righteous means God, the Father, is righteous. So I, I want to break this down. So it's showing us what righteousness really is. It's showing us that God, the Father, is righteous. And then it shows us also that Jesus is the Son, and he's called what? The righteous one. And then also through the Father, through the Son, and the Spirit gives the gift of righteousness. So the only way that we can get these things is not for us. It's not by us. And that's why it's letting us know when we break down what righteousness is, we can never be righteous unless we have a relationship with the Lord. And the only way to have a relationship with the Lord is to seek him and to seek his face. And so as we look at these things, it's showing us that through repentance of sin for salvation and now declared we are now declared righteous and so because of that we are justified by the blood of jesus that's why we are considered righteous excuse me even then even though we didn't have per se jesus on the scene at that time they were considered righteous because you believed in god it's the same principle and as long as you follow god you are considered righteous which means a follower of god and so this is where I'm trying to help us today that that's why I want to brag on our Lord because he is so awesome. It's nothing like having a place of safety. I don't know about y'all. It's nothing like having a peaceful home. That's what God is. It's nothing like being able to go and lay your head down knowing that you, you, you rest in peace. That's who God is. That's what the name of the Lord is. When you go to him, he gives you a rest in place. He gives you a place where you can lay your head and you're like, oh my God, thank you, Lord. I have some peace. But you have to have faith and believe that that's what he is and what that is. Look, they are and will be righteous because they are in the covenant. He's talking about the believers. Those will be and is and will continue to be as long as we have the covenant with the Lord. Let me finish this. The true Christian is the one who is committed to pursuing eternal life. How do you receive eternal life? By following the Lord, Jesus Christ. That's the only way to receive it. And by doing this, guess what? There is safety. There is love. There is kindness. All these things come with that. The abundant blessings. He or she is driven by a sense of danger. And we'll talk about that. He or she is excited by the hope of safety. And the reason why it's letting us know that we are, are, are driven by the sense of danger, because when things come, we have to understand that I was telling you earlier that Big Brother cannot stop certain things. The only one that we can run to that can help us in certain areas in our life is the Lord. My wife can't help me in certain areas. My kids my job, my father cannot help me, even though they might want to. They're sitting back and like, I would love to help me. When I was sick, I had help. But guess what? The Lord is who brought me through. That's how great he is. He is awesome. And he wants to do this for all of us. He don't want to just do this for the believer. He wants to do this for the unbeliever. He wants to bring you to repentance so that you can be saved. But you have to, but it says the righteous run into. The righteous run into, in other words, because they understand 
We understand that if we run to him, which means to run to God, that means you have to have faith. That means you have to believe that he is and that he will. Like the scripture says, and that he's a rewarder of them who diligently seek him. And that's what he does. We have to understand that that's who he is and understand that there, when we run to him and we trust in him, that he's going to take care of us. Okay, I'm, I'm coming to the end, y'all. I told you this is not a long, long sermon, but there are six things I want to hit on. Well, not six, four. Sorry. Four things that I want to hit on. Four keys and four, four safety tips that I want us to be aware of. And this is how we can really brag on God. This is how we can look at him and say, man, God is the truth. He, this is the truth right now, for real, for real. Let's look at it. Let's look at what God does. Look, let's look at the safety of the righteous. Now, I'm telling you, we, there's an advantage. There's an advantage of the righteous. Because when you are living and you're trusting and you're doing, these are some of the things that God would do for you. One, we are safe from the attack of the devil. Somebody right now said, oh, man, I'm being attacked right now and I'm living for God. Let me explain something to you. When you are in his hands, I'm not telling you that the attacks won't come. I'm telling you that he will protect you when the enemy comes. Listen to me. Listen up, y'all. He will keep us when the enemy comes against us. James 4 says, just submit yourself unto God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Again, submitting. What does that mean? That means we humble ourselves before God. We resist. In other words, we push back from evil. And it says that the enemy, this is what the scripture tells us, that the devil will flee from you. This verse reminds us that God is the source, which is why we should submit and rely on him. That's why we need to have that strong tower. That's why we got to run to him. We need to always be running to him, not just when we need help, but we should always be running to God constantly because he is our refuge. He is our safety. He is our protector. But all of these things come down to faith and believing. And if you believe and you submit and resist, the word can never come back void. It has to do what it's called to do. Believe that. Two, we are safe from the world. What am I talking about? You know, the world attacks. You know, the things that come from the world. He will keep us from the things of the world. Let me say something. Some of us love the things of the world so much. God is trying to protect us from that because he knows that if we fall in love with it, when it dies and burns, we're going to, we're going to die and burn with it. So he wants us to know that it's important that he be the one that we are part of. If you look at 1 John 4 and 4, it says, you are from God, little children, and have overcome them because greater is he who is in you than he who that is in the world. Let's look at that. Let's think about that. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. As we look at that, it lets us know and it reminds us that what we carry always outweighs whatever the devil would try to do. What does that mean? That means if we're carrying the Lord, in other words, if we're carrying the word in us and we're believing in God, it always outweighs what the devil tries to bring to us and tries to do to us. This should comfort us at these times because the world wants to consume us. He wants, the, the world wants to take us away from the, the, the things that God has for us so that we can forget about the goodness. And then we can look at things that look good but are not good for us. But God wants to show us that he has the good things and he has things in store for us. And even though right now might not feel so good or might not seem so fun, it works for the good. And so that's why it's so important that we know where to run to and who to go to when, when we when in need and out of need. Number three, 
We are safe from the blame of your own conscience. In other words, your own mind. Young people, sometimes it is us. We have blamed ourselves. We are looked down on ourselves. We have so much in us that we are afflicted with. In other words, we have so many things that we are going through that we have we kind of put on ourselves. We're blaming ourselves. We're looking down on ourselves. Our self-esteem is down. We have all these things that go on. Well, let me tell you in Hebrews 10, 22 says, let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith. With our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. What is that saying? We are reminded that the believers, we have an open way to the presence of God. And it is up to us to use this privilege. The way and means by which Christians enjoy such privileges is by the blood of Jesus, by the merit. In other words, unmerited, you know, is that is that favor that we can't even purchase. That blood that God had put on us, which he offered up as an atoning sacrifice. What, what am I saying today? What I'm telling you that is you don't have to blame. There's no sense of you blaming yourself or having this conscience or having these things. God is letting us know that as long as we draw near to him with a true heart and have faith, then he will sprinkle us. In other words, he will release those things off your heart. He will take that, that mindset from you. And he will take that evil thoughts out of your mind and he will purify you. In other words, he will cleanse you from these things and he will renew your mind. It's kind of like in Romans 12, 12 and 2, when it tells us to be not uh, conformed of this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. He's letting us know that as we, as we get and we draw near to him, he wants to renew our minds and our thoughts so that we're no longer the same. Young people, you don't have to be stuck where you are. You got young, you got other folks that surround you, even some family members that are talking and, and putting these evil thoughts and putting these things in your mind. You don't have to live by those. But God has called you to greatness and he wants to see you in this place. And that's why he is our strong tower. The last thing, and I'm closing on this. The, one of the last scriptures is we are safe and this is one of the things, and I, and I did this, this last scripture because this is one of the things that most of us have an issue with today. This is even, even the believer is, we, he will keep us safe from the fear of death. A lot of us today are so fearful of death. And mainly because we see and we've, we, unfortunately, the media, unfortunately, we've watched too many movies. Unfortunately, we've seen all this. And not that we just want to leave here and get out of here, but we're fearful of death because we know some of us understand that we're not where we're supposed to be. A lot of us are fearful of death because we just have these fears and these thoughts. And we've had, again, all these pictures in, in media and all these things that have been suggested. And that's why we're afraid of death. Well, let me, let me explain to you. Hebrews 2, 14, 15 says, Since therefore the children share in flesh and blood, he himself likewise partook of the same things, that through death he might destroy the one who has the power of death, that is the devil. See, the enemy wants us to fear death. And mainly because he wants us to, to think that if we die, that Oh man, we're going to hell or something's going to happen when we must understand that if we live for God, then we will reign with God in the end. But if we reign with the enemy, then we then also when we die, we go that same direction, which we are hell bound. So the enemy wants to put this thing in our mind. You know, and he wants to give us these thoughts and, and he wants to blog us and he wants to mess us up so that we are fearful of death. Look. If we live and we do what God has called us to, then we get to go to this marvelous place at the end. And we get to sit on the right hand side like Jesus with God. This is not a thing that we should be fearful of. Not again, not that you just want to get leave here and, and without doing what you feel like God has called you to. But we should not fear death. And so if we look at this, look. God has delivered us from so many things. Christ knew, and let's look at this. Christ knew that he must suffer in our nature. 
And so that's what the big example, that's what the example that God was giving us. And when I was telling you from the beginning, when I was telling you that the, when we parallel, when we look at the, the, the um, when we look at the beginning, when we talk about the strong tower and we look at Moses and how God had sent a cloud. Well, in the other part of, in the New Testament, when we look at Jesus, God sent his son. And the nature and the, and the nature of man and how he knew he must die in it. And yet he took it upon him. So he took this death upon us. And so that's why we shouldn't fear death, because he took the death. He took that weight off of us so that when we leave here, as long as we're living for him and the righteous running and we're running to him, then there is a kingdom that we will obtain at the end. And this atonement made way for his people and deliverance from Satan's bondage and for the pardon of our sins through faith. Let those, and I'm telling you, let those who are afraid of death no longer grow careless or wicked through despair. Let them not expect help from the world or human devices, because that's where we are. But let them seek redemption, peace, grace, and lively hope of heaven by faith in him and who is him Jesus who died and rose again that they may rise above the fear of death I know that was a lot y'all I know that was a lot but I, I had to I had to go there because God is so good think about it as we look at it I told you that he'll keep us safe from our own conscience He'll keep us safe from, from the, the worldly thoughts. He'll keep us from fear of death. So it's up to us to mount up, y'all. It's up to us to get ourselves together and run to the Lord. Run to the one who is righteous. Run to the one who is our refuge. Guess what? This, he, has one, he has one place and he has one shelter that will never, his roof will never leak. You'll never be cold or too hot. It's that place where it's just right and perfect for you because he is perfect. Even though we're not perfect, we can run to perfection. This is the awesomeness of God. Again, he is gracious. He's merciful and long-suffering. I hope somebody heard this today. I'm hoping somebody would share this with somebody else and let them know that the name of the Lord is a strong tower and the righteous run into and they're safe. He is our strong tower. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, again, we thank you. We thank you for your many lessons, Lord, but we thank you first that I can brag on you that when, when I try to run to others or I try to run, things fail, but when I run to you, I know that everything will fall in place. I thank you for being our shelter and, and for being our safe haven. I thank you for being a friend and, and, and a brother. I thank you for being a father and a mother. I thank you for being the, the everything that we need and even more. I thank you for being that financial blessing and that healing that we need. I thank you for the being the deliverer that is needed and that judge of righteousness. Lord, we thank you for all that you have done. We thank you for how you constantly look before us, Lord, and you go before us, Lord, and you stand before us and you look beyond our faults and see our needs. I thank you for your sacrifice, your sacrificial your, your lamb, your son, who came and died and that we may have life and have it more abundantly. And I thank you for your word. And I thank you for our family and friends, Lord. I thank you for, even though it's not even important, but I thank you for today, even this game that we're about to watch. I thank you for the things that, that you allow us to have that's probably not that important, but you constantly allow us to enjoy just because you love us that much. Thank you for it all. Watch protect us. Touch our youth right now as they go through. Touch others that are going through the sick and shut in, the, the homeless, Lord, the cold, those that are out here in this cold, Lord, the, the, those that are hungry, Lord, those in the hospitals, those that are going through the bereaved. Touch them right now. Touch the Newton family right now, Lord, as they go through and others that are going through this, uh, this time of mourning. Release your blessings upon all of us. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.